Hello, hello, welcome to Leap Taken. This is Mika, and here at Leap Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. So, today it's a fun topic. <laughs> You're out of the broom closet, so now what do you do? What are you up to? <laughs> so, that's what I'm going to talk about here on this video. No, seriously, though, like, um, you've made the decision to come out of the broom closet, you are now referring to yourself as a witch you know, across different platforms, social media, you know, real life, <laughs> the 2Ds, the 3D world, like you're, you've announced it to the universe, hey, guess what, I am a witch. Okay, so now that you've made your grand declaration and, you know, you've sworn off avoiding the answer and just, you know, just saying what you are if someone asks, um, now what? <laughs> so let's get into it. So first of all, these are just, again, I'm coming from a combination of my own experience and just seeing how others kind of deal with this so that's what this video is really going to be about but um, I mean I feel pretty strongly about I don't yeah I do feel pretty strongly about uh, these tips and suggestions I'm gonna give you and um, more importantly you know just remember this is your journey and I'm gonna circle back to that by the end but this is this is your journey how you live it from this point is up to you you could be out of the broom closet but never talk to anybody about it. That's perfectly fine, too. Out of the broom closet doesn't necessarily mean that you are walking around with a t-shirt on and, and everything else. But that says, hey, I am a witch. But if you choose to, that's fine, too. Which goes into the next thing. Let's recognize how brave you are. We know it hasn't always been easy to come out um, and claim witchcraft because... You know, quite frankly, historically speaking, that could be a death sentence, you know, a horrible death, <laughs> tortured death, let alone, um, you know, just being ostracized um, publicly by family and friends. You know, people just, they feel like you're evil. There's some people who come from very religious backgrounds, and it means a lot, the fact that they've publicly declared uh, that they're the other, you know. And what some people are just always going to see as evil, and the fact that you've spoken up for yourself and you're living literally your truth out loud um recognize that as true bravery that's brave um the other thing is i kind of want to talk about the announcement <laughs> do you need to tell the whole world about it now that you've made the decision to be out of the closet so let's just start from there you've made the decision you're no longer going to be in the witch broom closet you're out so um what are you going to do you know, are you going to make it a big, you know, social media post about it? Um, a video <laughs> with several checklists, checkpoints in it? Uh, maybe, you know, that that's your choice. Um, might I be <laughs> just offer another suggestion at this point is that you don't need to do that. You can have a full on ritual celebration with you by yourself or with others that you do trust um, on the day that you came out of the broom closet and how you would do that is you can treat it like a birthday like an anniversary have cake um wine uh, champagne mead whatever you're into um but yeah go all out make it a thing mark it on your calendar uh celebrate that make it make it a celebratory ritual every year that that's enough and if it's just you sitting there and nobody else get some cake get a candle, make a wish, blow it out, do, do it up, do the whole thing. I, I definitely, I've been solitary for a very long time. You have to make it celebratory, even if it's just by yourself. Learn how to do that. Um, if you feel silly doing it, so what? You feel silly. No one's around. You feel silly by yourself. The point is, mark the occasion. That can be enough. But if you do, listen, some of us are different. We're just, we're just wired different. We want to make a grand declaration. We want to make a fuss. And if you want to make a fuss and you feel confident, go on, go ahead, go on social media and make that post. Do what you're going to do. Understand, which is my next point, other people will offer their opinions. If you're going to make the big, you know, have the big conversation, that's awesome. Turn the comments off if you can, if you can't handle anything else, but you feel like you have to say something uh, on a public platform. Or if you don't care, don't care, just do it. Put your feelings out there if you want. Listen, you're an you're um, adult, which I'm assuming, right? You're watching this. <laughs> so um, 
I think you know yourself and you know your, what you can handle. At this point, no one should be uh, surprised how people respond on social media versus in real life if you tell them. In real life, people might clam up, make a little sound, you know, look around, roll their eyes. But on social media, you know, people feel like they can do and say anything. So, just, you know, compensate for that. Um, you're going to be the butt of jokes. This is the, another point in general. If you've told your family and friends, even the ones that are cool, even the ones that are, you know, accepting, um, people are have this weird thing where they joke about things. They make, you know, if they get uncomfortable, I do it. You know, we all probably have where if they get uncomfortable on the subject or they're trying to get comfortable um, on the topic of you being a witch or just the idea of all of that, they make jokes. And you're probably going to be the butt of those jokes. As long as they're not mean, people are just trying to express themselves and um, <laughs> they're thinking about it. Especially in the beginning, they're going to be thinking about it. What does this mean? So what, is she's magical now? What, does, what is she talking about, you know? And these are people who care about you, but listen, it might be a foreign concept to them. That's okay. You don't have to go into major defense mode. Um, don't, you know, feel like you're always up in arms. You have to explain something. Sometimes people, it's just a joke. As long, like I said, as long as it's not mean, I'd let it go. Um, and just go with the flow. As long as you can trust the person and they've never been hurtful in the past, I think they're just trying to get used to the concept of you saying that you're a witch. Um, so that's okay. But remember, it's, it's a coping um, technique, a coping mechanism for a lot of people to make jokes when they're uncomfortable. It's just a processing thing. I know, right? Humans. Okay. People are going to tell you about your their dreams. <laughs> Any kind of weird paranormal supernatural events, they will assume that you're psychic. They will assume that you um, can also, um, you're a medium. You can speak to the dead or something like that. They'll assume you have all these other talents. Um, you, you have a, you know, uh, great talent for divination, stuff like that. They're always going to assume that. Of course, you might not be into any of all these things. You might just have one thing that you're really working on or several, but not all. So just know that a lot of people don't fully comprehend, so they're going to think you're a jack of all trades. So just prepare for that. That That's something that's just going to happen. Well, it's not unfortunately. You just got to set them straight. Um, and again, managing... Other people are trying to, you know, if they're asking that sort of stuff, they're really trying to meet you halfway and, you know, give them a little um, <laughs> grace, so to speak, uh, because they're, they're trying. Um, and, this, and that's a respectful thing. Like, hey, let me tell you about my dream. Now, of course, you might not be good at, you know, deciphering dreams at this point, but just listen anyway. You'd be surprised. I think that sometimes the universe works in a way where um, it could just be an opportunity for you to just listen and it makes them feel better. Uh, or, and, or, <laughs> it also could be something, a message there for you as well. Something maybe you do know, and you don't realize it until, you know, somebody else is talking about the situation. And then you can actually, um, decipher the dream for them and let them know a little bit more about symbolism and all that sort of stuff, or it's an opportunity for you to learn more. Um, so that's a positive, you know, something, a positive twist on these things. Um, uh, the other thing I just want to say, um, Expect to feel freedom. Freedom. Once you make that decision in your mind and you're living it. Now, living it, like I said, you don't have to walk around with a name tag, a t-shirt that tells everybody, yeah, I'm a witch. But, or, you can, but like I said, you don't have to. It's just the persona now. It's part of who you are. And you're walking the, the, the walk, the talk. You know, you, <laughs> you're not just saying it, you're doing it. And it, it's going to come out in ways that are not intentional necessarily. It's just part of who you are. Um, one of the things I noticed about, um, well, I can only, like, I can speak from myself and my age group. Uh, people of my age, in my age bracket, and, and we're practicing magic, we're witches, uh, there's a certain mood, way about us. Um, I noticed most of us are really open to teaching, maybe not in a formal way, but we love um, helping other people. We love um, maybe even giving a little bit of unsolicited advice, but our advice is usually always on point. Um, you know, um, there's a natural glow, to be honest with you. I think 
that you get from uh, practitioners who, speci especially those who are, are very aligned and balanced in their practice, um, and older than myself, I find there's a certain glow, there's a certain essence, an aura that you're going to pick up on. And um, along with that, people respond to you a certain way, which sort of um, exacerbates or makes the concept of freedom even uh, a bigger. You kind of live a little bit more, you know, <laughs> you live out loud a little bit more. You're not as concerned about society norms and all that sort of stuff and, you know, uh, peers and peer pressure and all that sort of stuff. You're not really kind of vested in that anymore. Um, because you know there's so much more than what you can see with the naked eye happening around us. So it's hard to really worry about that sort of stuff when, you know, you know astrologically there's a huge shift that we're actively participating in. And, you know, it's hard to, to understand it and see evidence of it. Um, in the world, within politics, you know, you watch the news, you're seeing the shift, you're seeing it within, you know, your personal life, at work, or your family. So while all that's happening and you, you've got these spells going and you've got a ritual you're participating in and you're working, making sure your energy is balanced for that. So if, you know, <laughs> um, a friend or sibling, you know, asks you for something and you say no and they get kind of snotty with you and a little petty, you know, you're not, yeah, it got your attention, but there's so much other things going on. So you just don't respond the same way like you used to the more, in, in my, you know, listen, we're all different, but at least for me, as time goes on, you kind of mellow out. It's just not that important in the great scheme of things. You understand that they're probably acting out because of the shift and they don't know how to um, align their energy and be a little bit more balanced. Um, and, you know, you know a little bit more about them. Their diet's not great. You know, they're always in this space of uh, needing, needing, needing. They need to do their own work. You have compassion for them. You have empathy for them. You know what I mean? As opposed to just reacting to, you know, some petty thing that they said. And that's the kind of freedom that I'm talking about. When you have that way about you, um, and if you... You know, for some of us, uh, I, I think that's something that comes over time. I'm just saying. <laughs> time could be a year for some people. It could be six months. And so it's not like you have to be doing this for a long time to get to this space. Some people get there faster. But I do think for most of us, it's going to take time to kind of get to that example I just gave. Um, either way, there's freedom in all of that. Like, you just flow. You just move different. You just move different. Let me get something to drink. <laughs> Sun Joy from Chick Fil A. <clears throat> I love that. Okay, so the freedom. Oh, bask in the freedom. Um, freedom from other people's expectation about you, um, especially from a religious perspective. So once you've, you know, come out of the broom closet, and the people in your life actually know this about you. They won't expect certain things of you anymore. Um, they won't expect you to necessarily pray, like, or to say, I'll pray for you and things like that. Um, they won't expect that. You know, people who are meeting you halfway or who are, you know, accepting, you know, there's certain things that they'll, um, maybe not that one, but there's certain things people tweak things because they realize, oh, she, she doesn't do that. In the same way, if you, ch you know, change your religion and you, let's say you were a Christian and you be, you know, you became Jewish, um. Most people around you who, you know, or, or people in your life who care and support you, they'll understand that. So they know you're not, you most likely aren't going to put up Christmas decorations that go to the Christmas party. They get that, you know, that they're having. Um, they can totally understand that. Uh, so they might say, hey, well, we're having a holiday party. It's just those type of adjustments. People in your life, again, who care and support, um, give you care and support, are going to make those allowances for you. So expect that. And that's a nice treat. Um, on the flip side, <laughs> expect there to, those others who care and support you will be very, um, obsessed with wanting to save your soul, possibly make allowances for that. Um, especially the ones who are probably going to be a little bit older, your mom, grandma, aunties, uncles, and so forth, father, they're going to really want to save your soul. And, um, you know, they may never understand. Uh, 
this journey that you're on, they may never get it. And you got to just understand some people are just never going to get it. And yeah, you love these people. They'll never get it. They'll never really respect what you're doing because they see it as something that's terribly wrong, evil, you know? And, um, <laughs> there's, I would just say, save your energy when trying to argue, just live your life. Eventually, as time goes, they'll see that, you know, you are a decent person, you have morals, you're still helping people, especially if you're somebody who is helpful and you help in the community, you help other people, you know, you donate, you do all the, the, the nice things, the humane things, right? And they see you're doing that. And oh, by the way, I also, you know, do this whole witchcraft thing as well. It's a big part of who I am. Um, people eventually will see that you're, you're still a decent person. Um... And you're also a witch. You're both, you can be both. You're not evil. Uh, I'd like to believe over time, you know, for those who love, care, and support you, uh, again, for them, they'll never accept it, but they accept you. They just love you. So, <laughs> you know, you kind of got to reconcile that and make room for that. It, like I said, especially with our older, um, our elders, some of them really struggle with this concept, but, you know, you got to live your life too, just like they live theirs. So don't make apologies. Um, finally, uh, I just kind of want to make this point about it being your journey. You know, this is your witchcraft. You live it how you, you see fit. Um, it is very difficult for other people to tell you exactly what you should or shouldn't do once you're on this journey. I can, like I said, suggestions, tips. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that you have to do anything. Um, or you can't do something I don't know if you picked up, if you watched this channel before, I I don't like really pushing people in any one direction because, you know, who am I? It works for me. It might not work for you. In my experience, YouTube has definitely been a place where I've come out of the broom closet, even though I didn't hide it before. Um, because I have this channel, it's, you know, people know. People know who I don't, who never said anything to me. If you understand what I'm saying, friends, family, because it's so easy now because the technology it makes between Google and Apple, you know, and um, Facebook, Instagram, you know, they make, it makes suggestions. So um, if you have a phone number, it'll say, hey, you know, on your social, if you're on Instagram or whatever, leap taken might come up with my face on it. So people click on it. Oh, I know her. And um, they may not have known I practiced witchcraft because I didn't have on a t-shirt that day that said that I did. So, you know, it's, and they find out, and they, they've never spoken to me about, it. I've had quite, there's quite a few people I know because of others have, have mentioned it, or way after the fact they told me, oh yeah, I saw that, you know, before, you know, your channel or whatever. So they're familiar with what I do. And, um, I'll be honest with you at this stage of my life, it has not been an issue. No one has, um said anything to me again I think I I have uh just being you know the grown woman thing on my side so you know usually if you're younger you know people people like my age maybe and older they want to come to you and they want to kind of you know put you on the right path and fix you I'm not saying that there's no one who, who feels who feels like I need to do that trust me they, they exist but they're not as vocal and for some reason we feel when people are younger you can uh, just kind of say whatever. I don't I don't really like that. I understand about giving advice, but sometimes the unsolicited advice, unsolicited advice is not always delivered in a compassionate, respectful way. And just because someone's younger doesn't mean you should talk to them any sort of way. Um, I know that because it's, it used to happen more when I was younger, As but as I've aged, I'm not getting a lot of that anymore. <laughs> People don't do that anymore. So I know it's a youth thing. But anyway, um, this is your journey and uh, you know you got to do it the way it makes sense for you um, I know for me like I said coming out on YouTube uh, and then consistently making videos has definitely opened things up I'm glad I did it I wish I was on YouTube way before I got on consistently like I wish I had been doing this because um, this has been a passion of mine and a big part of who I am and what I've been doing for more than a decade, you know what I mean? So I should have just, I wanted to share, but, you know, I had to go through my journey. 
Uh, but here I am now, and I'm very open and vocal, and I'll help other people. That's how great, I, exciting, and, and great I find witchcraft to be, you know? Uh, those who want to be helped, those who want to hear about it. I don't mind giving suggestions. I don't mind commenting and answering your comments when you ask a question or about resources. I, I love doing all that sort of stuff because I really love this life. I really love practicing magic. I love witchcraft. Um, there's peace in it. There's fun in it. You know, there's excitement in it. Uh, there's um, all kinds of stuff in it that I, I really enjoy and I really get. Um, a lot out of it and it's enriched my life in ways I would have never imagined. So um, being able to say that openly because I'm out of the broom closet uh, is super helpful. A um, couple other quick little things if you made it this far in the video. If you are at work, you know you work in a corporate world, you could live out the broom closet but you don't have to announce it at work. Say, you know, look, don't mess with your money. And certain, you know, the worlds don't have to collide. If there's somebody at work who knows you are or makes a suggestion or just blatantly asks you if you are a witch, that's up to you if you want to answer. Um, I like to go with why. <laughs> Before I answer anything, why, why, what's going on, what do you want to know? Oh, I just wanted to know. And I'll be like, well, what made you ask me that? Notice I'm asking, I'm not answering a question. I have come across people who are like, well, can you just answer me if you are? And I'm like, I'm a little concerned with why. Why are you so um, pressed about this? Like, what's going on? You, you can't just ask me something like that and not tell me. That's me. And I may or may not ever answer the question because now you have a different motivation. I, you, you know, your spidey senses, witchy senses should be going off if somebody is acting like that or approaching you. You know, I'm, <laughs> I don't owe you anything. Yet I'm still very much living out of the room closet but you know you have to guard yourself as well now on the flip side if you are gratefully employed in a space where you can be your authentic self you know even at work <laughs> your witchy self so to speak um you know set up crystals put all that stuff around your area you know um you know do whatever rituals you need to do uh, to start your work day, you know, within, you know, reasonable limits, of course, whatever you do for your ritual, but, you know, really live, live out your witchiness <laughs> wherever you are, basically, is what I'm getting at. But at the same time, please compensate that every environment is not going to be safe for us who calls, who call ourselves witches, even, you know, this older one. <laughs> it's not always a safe place for us because we do still have a lot of ignorance and, um, do you want to spend every day at work always, you know, dodging questions about your witchcraft? No, you don't, especially if they're coming from, you know, a negative place. So just be careful is what I'm getting at. That was just my little quick tip. But that's it. That's all for the video today. I'm Mika. This is Leap Taken. Thank you again for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, share. And uh, if you've already subscribed, again, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.